Hey everyone, Techni here with a video I have been waiting to do for a while. Honestly, because I've been waiting for all of my parts to come in. And that is my first Intel PC build. All right, so that brings us right into the parts we're using. As far as our motherboard, using the MSI Gaming Plus Z390 motherboard right here. What we're gonna be putting into the motherboard here is the Intel i7-9700K CPU. Now, as far as our graphics card here, we're using the MSI 28 is super. Now, we will also be using 32 gigabytes of G-Skills Rip Jaws V RAM right here. Here, as you can see, we have the red sticks and again, four sticks of eight gigabytes at 3,600 megahertz. As far as memory, all I'm gonna use is some M.2 drives here. I got a 500 gigabyte, which I took out of my other PC because I honestly just wasn't using it in there. It's a WD Black. And then I have another one terabyte WD Black M.2 over here. As far as our power supply, we're using the EVGA 750 gold supernova power supply. Talking about power supply and being fully modular as well, I got some custom cables here, the red ones by linked up on Amazon, not too expensive, pretty much priced right in between right there. And for our cooling, we're gonna use a Deep Cool Castle 240EX, the dual fan setup right here. And as far as our fans, I'm gonna be using the Antec PWM F12 fans. And I also will be putting in this sound card, the Sound Blaster A9. And what we're gonna be putting everything in is the Techware VXR dual chamber case right here. Shout out to Techware for sending this case out. I mean, it is just awesome. It's exactly what I was looking for in a case. I was looking at the Lian Lee, am I, Liam Lee, am I saying that right, Case? But as you all know, if you've seen that one before, all your connections are right on the front. I'd face my computer towards the wall rather than facing that. And it's really cool with this guy here. Everything is actually on top here, if you can see right over there. It's just, I mean, it is a big case for sure. It is a big case with all the glass and everything, but it's so cool because as you can see, you have your PSU slot right back here and it's separate from everything up there. So it's going to look real nice and clean with all the goodies just right up here. Tons of air flow which you all know I really love and I believe this case only comes in at a hundred bucks you can only get it on eBay right now I believe or through Techware's website but again at a hundred bucks right now looking at it it looks phenomenal but of course we got to get in there and start building it and see how it works out there so anyways let's get building I'll be right back with you guys
right, so finally back. It's probably been around two weeks or so. Ran some testing on it and everything as far as the PC. By the way, I had to go back and look at some of the other footage, just kind of recoup where I am right here, right? Did any of you just notice that I was wearing my gamer glasses throughout the entire first part there? It's like, son of a gun, I didn't even realize it. These things are awesome. You should check out the review we recently did on these. But anyways, as far as the PC right here, let me tell you what. This thing is an absolute workhorse. Me gaming on 1440p, I mean, this guy is cranking out some power. But before we get into some numbers right there, we'll talk about temperatures and frames per second within some games and everything like that. But let me tell you what, as far as working with this PC, as far as building, number one with this case being bigger, like we said with the dual chamber, so incredibly easy to work with. I mean, the space in the back, let me let me go on and spin it around here for you so you can see. I can sit here and talk about it, but let me just show you. Ah, there we go. So we'll snap it off. I'm not sure how well you can kind of check it right there. You see we got the PSU kind of sideways. I did not do a single bit of wire management here, by the way. I just took everything and just kind of tucked it in there. Yeah, I did kind of crimp these ones together, but that's about it. And I got all of this space back there still. Really nice airflow. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look pretty, you know what I mean? But it doesn't look jumbled. I really love having this extra space to work with. It just makes everything so much smoother and so much easier. Now we did actually have one hiccup. As you notice, I'm not using the red wires that we had right there. I had to go to the stock EVGA ones. Now with the uh, custom wires, I had the red ones. They're really firm and they wouldn't bend over. And this graphics card right here, this MSI 2080 uh, Super, is stinking gigantic as we saw coming out the box, right? But anyways, even with this being a much larger case, whenever I come over here and swing the glass on, I mean, it does fit and it does close, but it's pressing right against those wires right there. That's about like the max I could get. And if I wanted to go with those custom wires, the front glass would not fit at all. Again, it would bend down and then pull the graphics card down. So that's kind of a stinker, but heck, we saved 35 bucks. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about some numbers. And number one where I want to start off, and you all know I love this subject here, is cooling with the case here. And then with our Castle 240EX cooler here. I always debated, and you all have probably seen some of my reviews before on some of my Scythe air coolers, and I absolutely love them. Results were fantastic, especially for a dollar, you know what I mean? But I really wanted to go with the AIO again. I went with the 240 up here again, two fans. It's just aesthetically more pleasing, you know what I mean? But not even really that. Going with the air cooler, again, with the ones I was using, they're just big and they were very hard to work with. You know, if I wanted to get in there and kind of tweak something around, move a, a fan or something like that, or dabble with my RAM or a, a, my M.2s or something, I always had to take that cooler out to get to any of that stuff. So again, besides it just being aesthetically pleasing and looking really cool, you know what I mean? I, I, it just makes it really easy to work around the PC in the future. But on top of it looking great, and everything like that. I got some notes here with my numbers. You all know I don't script, so I got it all written right down here with some of my chicken scratch notes in my nice polka dotted notebook here, right? Anyways, as far as stag temperatures on the GPU and CPUs, I never really broke 30. Every now and then, I, sure, I would jump up into the very low 40s, but average, I was sitting right there on 30s right there. And again, it just flowed fantastic. All of my fans, which I'll do a, a sound test here for you in a second, plug it up and everything. All my fans are 800 RPM across the entire PC. Again, in the front over here, I don't know if I call that the front, the side front, I guess, right? We got three 120s pulling intake in, and then on the bottom, intake as well. So we got six fans doing intake, and our really only uh, exhaust right there is the graphics card, and then the AIO right up front here. Now, in game, and I'm talking for long game sessions as well, especially in Call of Duty, which is a fairly demanding game right there. In game, I was around 50s, low 50s, every now and then I peaked up into mid 50s. And again, nothing really sounded like this jet taking off. Everything was just really nice and smooth flowing. Again, as far as my intake and everything, I had everything really exposed and free. It wasn't right up against the wall or anything like that. And again, everything just flew really nice. And I tested the temperatures again in multiple games, but majority within Call of Duty. And those are pretty much the temperatures I stayed across right there. So as far as this combination, again, as I always state in many of my reviews, as far as your coolers and everything, they do play a huge role in it, big time. But I think the biggest impact, again, is your case and how you're allocating that airflow, whether it be your intake and then your exhaust and everything, you know what I mean? And I believe with these six fans causing the intake right here, I believe we have very, very nice airflow, plenty of spots for it still to exhaust out, even though we're just using two 120s at the AIO up there. So again, I think the combination we have here is absolutely phenomenal. So now we have it on right here, and I'm not sure how well you guys can hear it. Again, I have my mic right here. It's probably about two feet from the case. 
I'm really not too sure how well you guys can pick that up, but again, it's not loud at all. It's almost like, say if you got your car air conditioned set on setting one, that's exactly what I'd compare it to. But again, really, really nice airflow coming up top right here, that intake. The one thing you might be questioning is how we have the intake on the bottom. It's almost like a vacuum. So with this kind of setup, I would highly not recommend you putting it down onto the floor. I actually had to buy a different little bookcase to set it up off the floor because before my PC was about, I don't know, maybe half a foot off the floor right there. So yes, with that kind of setup with the intake on the bottom, again, don't put that right on your floor. It's just gonna suck up all sorts of dust. But again, super quiet. Very nice airflow, absolutely perfect. All right, so now let's get to the fun stuff as far as performance with this guy. Again, 2080 Super, i7 9700K, and then 32 sticks of RAM at 3600 right there. Nothing is overclocked right there. Again, everything is plugged in and played, and that is it. Now I game on a 144 hertz monitor at 1440p, so every single game we're gonna talk about right here is at 1440p. And the first game I'd like to start off right here is the game I play the majority of the time. Now, and that's Call of Duty Modern Warfare, whether it be multiplayer or Warzone. Now, with Call of Duty, I do get in there and dabble with my settings a little bit. I mean, everything's pretty much right on high or very high, but I get in there and do reduce my shadows and stuff or like the particle lighting and stuff. So yes, Call of Duty, I do dabble with the settings a little bit. It's still pretty much maxed out and looks absolutely gorge. Anyways, I was averaging 150 frames. Again, I pretty much always stayed right around there and it looked absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. Again, within Warzone or multiplayer, the best I've got on any PC I have used yet. And again, it's fantastic. Now jumping down here into Fortnite, I don't mess with any settings. I don't go in there and dabble, dabble with any of the shadows, which I know is a big thing to do with Fortnite. I don't know. I just like the way that game looks. So I like kind of maxing it out. It just looks gorgeous with all the colors and vibrancy and everything, you know? So anyways, on Epic, I was getting 95. And then when I boosted it down to high, I was getting around 140. Again, that's not dabble with everything that's just basic settings right there set on epic bam and then set it on high over here and again it looked fantastic no stuttering no jittering or anything it looked great now jumping over here rainbow six we all know that's not a demanding game at all again i don't go in there and dabble with any of the settings i just go in there and set the preset right there on ultra i was getting 190 then bumping it down to high, I was getting 222. Like, holy smokes, my monitor doesn't even uh, go up to that high, you know what I mean? So as far as those games, as far as like competitive play, it's really nice seeing this kind of performance right there, again, at 1440p. Now, the one that really shocked me, the one that made me just really smile the division two what a time to be playing a division two by the way right like uh you know with the virus and everything and then popping into division it's almost like geez it almost puts you in a scary place playing the game it's really cool you got to try it but seriously the division two if any of you have watched any of my other previous pc builds i've tested division two on pretty much all of them and it is such a hard game to run on any of my previous pcs whether it be the 5700 xt the vega 64 or whatever it was you know what i mean so it's kind of and i would barely be able to break like 70s or 80s and stuff you know it was pretty tough to get up there i had to really get in there and really dial them down to even get right there to a comfortable range you know but again going into division right now maxed out i did adjust some of the shadows and stuff like that nothing major by any means and i was getting 99 average like Wow, I mean, it is the best I've ever seen that game. It was just so awesome. I wanna replay the entire game because it is butter stinking smooth and it looks fantastic. But yes, with the division, you know, you got these areas with a lot of action and foliage and buildings and everything going on, lighting and shadows. Then you get into some of these areas where it's just, I don't know, just very mellow, you know what I mean? So yes, whenever you got into those heated moments right there, it did drop a little bit, right? You'd get into those high 80s, low 90s. But again, that's kind of rare. You got to be in a really packed, congested place. Lots of enemies and trees and everything. So again, with an average of 99, wow. Absolutely phenomenal and the best I have seen on this game, again, as far as any of the PCs I have built. So all in all, I am incredibly happy with this build. Very, very happy. I love the case. I love the aesthetics and everything, you know. Um, sure, I wish the graphics card might have been a little bit smaller so I could fit that on better right there. And yes, I did, you know, kind of question myself a lot. Man, should I just spend that extra 500 bucks and get the 2080 Ti? But I'm sorry, man, 500 bucks is a lot. We're already at a decent penny right here, you know what I mean? And again, I did not want to go to that extra 500 bucks. And with the performance I get right now at 1440p, 144 hertz, 
I'm completely comfortable. So hey, let me know down in the comments what you think about this build here. I'm really curious, would have you spent that extra 500 bucks to go 2080 Ti and just kind of be maxed out right there? Again, I'm very happy and very comfortable with what we did here. I'm a big cheapo, so I didn't go with that extra bit, but I'd really like to hear from you guys if you would have just splurged and went for that extra push. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope I answered some questions you were looking into a build like this, and I hope you enjoyed the video. But honestly, all I have in my mind right now is I want to go stink in game so hey thank you so much for stopping by and watch this one i hope you enjoyed it if you did hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos hey i hope i catch you in the next one bye now